going on guys this is the anonymous bear and uh we're gonna do something a little bit different today you see once you do love is um i do love games even though i've made three videos about how i hate various games so i'm gonna do something a little bit different this is going to be an edited let's play that's going to teach you how to beat uh majora's mask so, the uh, thing is, Majora's, The Legend of Zelda Majora's Mask has definitely gained a uh, cult following over the years, it's definitely critically acclaimed. However, one thing that does turn people off from this game is its lack of save feature or its three-day cycle. I'm going to teach you with this series of videos how to do a 100% run. In this uh, particular video, we're going to do uh, from... Uh, the beginning up to uh, Woodfall Temple, and we're going to do some side quests here and there, because Majora's Mask is pretty much 80% side quests. I will be going all 100%. This will be, in this run, this will be uh, all masks, all stray berries, all upgrades, all items, etc., all heart pieces. So, um, yeah, look at these uh, impressive uh, graphics for its time. Definitely not of age the best, but they're... Uh, there's some, there's some charm about the Nintendo 64 because it was the first of the 3D Nintendo consoles. Here's the game out. And instead of playing Tears of the Kingdom, which I haven't even finished Breath of the Wild, so I'm gonna wait till I finish Breath of the Wild until I play Tears of the Kingdom. But either way, since there was a new Zelda game out, I thought I'd basically uh, walk you through Majora's Mask, my personal favorite Zelda game. And this video right here. Is how this is how to beat the Legend of Zelda Majora's Mask for the N64. We're gonna let this rest this intro play out, but um, yeah, the first set of three day cycles I will walk you through, and it will go toward in the next. Uh, after that, we will I'll teach you how to go up to the first temple, and uh, yeah, we're gonna see uh, Skull Kid looking at the moon. I will explain the uh, main plot of this game in a bit. Let me be fair, I don't know if there's anyone that doesn't know the uh, main plot of Majora's Mask. But yeah, we are going to do something a little bit different today. This is how to beat the Legend of Zelda Majora's Mask 100%. Alright, so, uh,. There are two. One thing about this game is that there are two save files. We're gonna name our character Link, but uh, I'm gonna give a fun fact. The Japanese version actually had three save files. I will explain a little bit later the reasoning as to why they reduced save files in the U.S. version. But yeah, there are some notable differences between the Japanese version and this version. Also, there's also in the land of Hyrule, there echoes a legend, a legend that dearly by the royal family. Tells of a boy, a boy who after battling evil and saving Hyrule crept away from the land that had made him a legend. Done with the battles he once warped across time, he embarked on a journey in secret of a friend. A journey starts from a blood and valuable friend. As that text is a little too fast to be read. To be fair, this all, this, te this this footage is also pre-recorded. I'm commenting over it because I find that method to be easier. This is basically going to be kind of like an edited let's play. The final video is also going to be two, nearly three hours long. So, like, this will be a multi-part series, and each part will go towards one temple. So, like, I don't think this will take any more than five parts. Definitely five parts at the max, I think, this will take. And uh, I've already uh, recorded the uh, first set of the footage. And uh, basically, we're seeing Link ride on a pony. There's two fairies. Pretty self-explanatory of what, uh, the, of, uh, this game is basically, this cutscene is basically introducing you to the main characters of this game. Only Link and Epona return from Ocarina of Time. This game is a sequel to Ocarina of Time after, uh, Young Link got sent back at the end of that game. As a result, Young Link's Epona, he's knocked off his horse right there. And there is a Majora, he's a Skull Kid that is wearing Majora's mask, but I'll get to that in a little bit. He's basically the main antagonist of this game. So, like, this game will say there's no Zelda aside from one cutscene, which we'll get to later, and there's no uh, Ganon in this game. So, like, yeah, it's a very 
It's a very unique t take on the Zelda franchise, and that's what I've always liked about this game. So yeah, Skull Kid is going to take uh, Link's Ocarina, which uh, the Ocarina of Time from uh, the previous game is uh, one of the things Link took with him when he left Hyrule. Anyway, these are the two fairies, uh, Tattle and Tail. They are brother and sister fairies. And Link realizes uh, Skull Kid just knocked him off his horse. They knocked him off his horse, so he's going to... Go and chase them, because Skull Kid also steals a Pona. So we're gonna watch this little chase scene for a bit. So yeah, you should just grabbing some popcorn, or like, uh, maybe... I don't encourage alcohol consumption, but uh... Maybe grab a beer while you're at it, because this is going to be a long video. It's going to go very in-depth of, a, like, um, certain parts of this game, certain side quests also, what I recommend doing, what I don't recommend doing. I think that does turn some people off of this game. So they try to play this like the uh, 3D Zelda, just run into all the temples. This game, you have to focus on the side quests. Like... So, like, as we can see right now, now, early on with this part, I would suggest g cutting these bushes and gaining as many rupees as possible. We're going to see why in a little bit. We already have 18 rupees, and there's a... Uh, yeah. So, I would suggest maybe gaining as much early rupees as possible. I think 18 should be reasonable enough. And you can see by these jumps. Uh, Link also gained some new moves, like flipping all that. I believe this takes place a year or so after Link left Hyrule after the events of Ocarina of Time. I could be wrong. Ah! And Link falls into this random hall. There are these, like, uh, various uh, sprites on that, which look pretty cool for a time. For a game from 2000, this actually looks pretty good. I know a lot of people dismiss the N64's graphics and not age well, but you have to keep in mind, these are over 20-year-old graphics. Skullkid is basically going to say right here um, that he got rid of a Pona. The thing is, uh, no one really find a Pona in this game. How did he get rid of her that fast? I don't know. I, I'm the, I've always kind of wondered that. <laughs> We're going to see this creepy cutscene. And we are now a Deku Scrub, which uh, we're going to be stuck like this for a while. <laughs> Paddle's going to basically try to attack us, but she gets she loses the... Uh, Skull Kid and Tail in the process. Adel is basically going to be your uh, fairy companion for this game, and uh, I do kind of like Tattle as a character because Tattle kind of basically uh, gets sidetracked into us. Link basically gets sidetracked into doing this quest while leaving Hyrule because, like, it's now been proven that Link left Hyrule and searched for Navi, who left Link after the events of the previous game, because in Ocarina's time, Navi was only instructed to lead, to basically guide Link until his adventure was over, so, um, 
Yeah, Link left Hyrule and started for Navi, but ended up with Tattle in the process. Tattle, um, is an interesting character. She does give you advice. She doesn't, like, give advice in your face as much as Navi, but, like, um, and I definitely think there are other ways that are better for first-timers than Tattle. Tattle also, um, has, uh, has a ding where, like, Navi has to hey and listen and all that. So yeah, Tattle is, a, Tattle is an interesting character, but at the same time, like, not really as interesting to, like, say, dude, she definitely tells you, like, uh, the basis of the plot and all that. Yeah, Tattle is basically, uh, your favorite companion, as I said. But, like, um, one thing that's, there, one thing I'm going to explain over here is, um, one thing Dagolin can do is that he can go into these, uh, little things, you hold the A button, and then you basically fly... This is basically a training thing to get you used to uh, how Deku Link controls. Except uh, I'm failing to get it in this footage, but like, but yeah, this, is just, this is basically a train line. One thing is, if you fall in pitch, you actually don't lose hearts on like in other 3D Zeldas. But yeah, this is basically a training thing to get you used to how uh, Deku Link controls. And we get the Deku Nuts right here, which is one of the items that returns from Ocarina of Time. One thing about this game is that they actually did develop this in like 18 months, I believe it was, and they reused a lot of the uh, graphical elements and a character from Ocarina of Time. So like, yeah, like, so this is definitely an Ocarina, this definitely has an Ocarina-like feel, but definitely a lot darker as well. But yeah, that little uh, Deku scrub, that's to basically tell you about Z-targeting. So, like, if you never played Ocarina of Time, like, that's definitely a good way to get used to how, uh, the th how these two games control. I played Ocarina before I played Majora's Mask. I had Ocarina of Time, like, uh, as a kid because an older cousin uh, lended it to me. But, like, I didn't play Majora's Mask until it came out in the Wii Virtual Console, even though I really love both games. And as I said earlier in this video, Majora's Mask is actually my favorite Zelda game of all time. But, yeah, that door's gonna shut. So, basically, you can no longer go back to the training area, which I don't see why you would. Now we're gonna go up those, uh, stairs right here. Remember the terrible thing, haven't you? That's a very iconic line in this game. This is the, uh, Happy Mask Salesman from... This is one of the recurrent returning sprites from... This is one of the returning characters from Ocarina of Time, actually, not just sprites. They do reuse a lot of the character sprites from Ocarina of Time, but give them different names, and I'll elaborate them later. But yeah, I think there's actually a returning character from Ocarina of Time. And he plays a much bigger role, because Ocarina of Time here is really just a side quest to, like, borrow a mask and basically sell them to people. Yeah, he's, he's basically telling you about the three days that you have. Basically, um... One thing about Majora's Mask, the main gimmick of Majora's Mask that each Majora's Mask goes in three day cycles, and when the three days are up, the moon is going to crash into Termina, killing everyone in the process. Dawn of the first day, 72 hours remain. So we have we have basically three days to get the mask back and basically to encounter Skull Kid. Throughout this first set of three days, we're basically going to learn the whereabouts of him. And listen to this iconic clock pound music. It does, the clock pound music actually changes depending on what day it is. I think all three songs are pretty good. Per favorite out of the clock pound songs is the one on the second day, but uh, yeah, we are stuck in Dickling for a while, so yeah, like uh, we're kind of like. You see the clock on the bottom bit? That basically tells you your time. This is basically a Deku scrub. He's gonna be important for a little later on. Also, if you're doing 100%, get used to seeing this guy, I'll tell you that. But yeah, we want what we want to do right off the bat is we want to go to this laundry pool. Like, uh, it's going to say it's the laundry pool, but uh, we want to grab the stray fairies there. There are two stray fairies in Clock Town Hughes. This one I find the easier one to get. To get. I get, say that as I'm struggling in the footage. So this is pre-recorded footage, and... That's a character that's gonna be important for later. 
We should do much in this first set of three days. There's a couple of side quests we're going to do as well. Yeah, this is South Clock Town. We're going to, uh, we're, our goal is to go to North Clock Town and basically, uh, see the, uh, Great Fairy. That's why we, uh, picked up the Stray Fairy. These are the whole statues. Um, the reason for the Japanese versus three save files, actually, is because, uh, in the Japanese, even though you can, the only other way to save the game aside from, aside from one way we're going to figure out is to save it out of statues, even though we can't save it out of statues yet. You couldn't save it out of statues in the Japanese version, so yeah, um, they had to get rid of a save file in order to be able to save it out of statues. But one way, one thing about those bushes is that, uh, that's actually a really good way to farm rupees. Just leave North Clock Town and come back. You'll basically, um, I think I, I, think I kind of demonstrate here, but, uh, I basically, one way to rupee farm is to leave South North Clock Town, come back, and basically just, the bushes will respawn. And then just put on the Deku mask and just... It's a really good way to farm rupees. And there's uh, going to be one piece of heart later on that's going to involve rupees. There's actually several that involve... I think a couple that involve rupees, but uh, that's aside the point. But uh, before we see the Great Fairy, we're actually going to do one side quest. Uh, this is going to be... Uh, we're going to take that uh, Deku thing right here. You don't have to do this, but if you're doing 100%, you have to do this. But... Uh, you want to see this day scrub every three days and play mini game now. Um, one thing is I did do a little bit of editing with the footage. I try to make sure that uh, with each uh, of these days, like the, the successful take is the take you see in the video. So like I try to make sure on that. I do, That's also me saying I did this in one try, but like... Um, you want to do this mini game over three days. What? Just a fair warning, though. You can't take too long because you can't do this mini game at night. You can only do this during the day. So yeah, you want to grab all these rupees and um, make sure if you fail this mini game, you have to break even because each time you play this mini game, it does cost ten rupees. So it's the reason I suggested rupee farming earlier. But there's another reason I suggested uh, rupee farming. And we're gonna get to it in a bit. And there's the blue rupee, that's worth five rupees in most Zelda games. There's one more rupee we have to get in. Um... Yeah, this isn't really necessarily a hard mini game, like, but yeah. If we uh, if we do this uh, on day one and day two, we're gonna get this following uh, reward right here. We get the uh, purple rupee, which are fifty rupees. This farm rupees, but the the going to the grass is the easiest one we we have for now. But yeah, I think I actually um. I think I try to rupee farm it here because like um one thing we also want to do is uh there's a. Uh, I think, uh, I'm trying to remember what I do next. I think I do, I think I see, uh, that guy in green, Tingle. You want to buy, uh, what I recommend doing your first time through is to buy Tingle's maps. So there's the option to buy one of Clock Town Woodfall. We don't have to buy the one of Woodfall, and also, later on, there's a cheaper way, method of buying the Woodfall one. So we don't really need to buy the Woodfall one here. It's really a waste of rupees. But yeah, I actually, uh, before I see the Great Fairy, I actually go to, uh, actually a Rupee Farm. <laughs> I like to forget what I do in this footage, even though, I, like, I've played this game a bunch of times, and I always have a consistent way of playing this. But now that's what I'm thinking, is, uh, I go to the Great Fairy. I was thinking I'd deposit the Rupees, but we don't do that yet. But yeah, this is the, this is why we need to get the Stray Fairy earlier. We, this is our main, uh, objective so far. You have to see this particular Great Fairy multiple times for completionist's sake, but you don't have to for, like, if you just haphazardly went through the game. What I would recommend, though, is, um, and I'll get to this at a later point, but, like, um, one thing I would personally recommend is, um, 
Even if you're not gonna 100% this, like all heart pieces and all that, I would at least recommend going for every mask in this game because that does get you the best ending. So yeah, now we have a magic meter, which allows us to uh, shoot um, belt bubbles out of our snot. Shoot snot bubbles and all that. We're actually, this is our main uh, thing right here, is uh... We wanna pop that bubble, we can only, we can only do that without seeing, without seeing the Great Fair, but uh... Yeah, we need to talk to this bomb leader, Jim. What part, which is to uh, catch these bombers? And uh, side note, if you're playing the 3DS version, these bomb kids are going to be in different locations. This walkthrough is entirely basis on if you're playing the N64 version, because I've never actually played the 3DS version. I own the 3DS version. I've just never actually played through it in full. But uh, I will reveal every bomb location. There's two in North Clock Town. There's two in East Clock Town. There's one in West Clock Town. So yeah, now we're gonna go to East Clock Town and get those uh those other two. We actually have not even visited East Clock Town in this yet in this uh run. Anyway, so the, there are two in this uh and we wanna actually get up on that uh we want to use that uh, Dagon Flower to uh, get up and get that kid that thinks he's clever by hiding up on that roof. Yeah, kid, you think you're clever, but you're not going to outspeed a Deku Scrub. We have to do this again for a side quest purposes, but uh, one thing you could do is that you could also get a reservation in the hotel. We, I think I do talk to this individual, but um, yeah, you don't really have to get it. But if you're doing a side quest later, I'm saying you're it. You don't really have to get the reservation, and uh, there's another way to enter the hotel because the hotel is supposed to close at like maybe nine o'clock at night. But like, um, there's another way to enter the hotel, and I also demonstrated one thing that's important for later. Is, um. This is the mayor's residence. Uh, we don't have to do anything here. I just like to see this cutscene right here. There are these uh, people debating whether to, uh, cause like there are these guards that want the uh, people to evacuate and there are, there's the mayor trying to scramble and these uh, people running the carnival. These are turning surprise from Ocarina of Time. Like this is the, uh, this is the leader of the uh, carpenters in uh, Ocarina of Time. The mayor's not a returning sprite, but the uh, guards and uh, there are a lot of returning sprites locked in town. I'll try to point out as many as possible. Yeah, we don't really have to do much here, but um, it's a nice little bonus. But um, yeah, now we're gonna go to West Clock Town and uh, basically uh, we're gonna deposit our rupees and the, our 99 rupees because we want to get 200 rupees in the bank right off the bat. That's what, another reason I recommended rupee farming, and it's actually going to turn into the night of the first day. You want to catch these kids before it gets to dawn, because if it gets to dawn, you have to do this side quest over. Actually, this isn't a side quest. You have to do it, like, doing it the second time is the side quest part. Like, it's uh, getting the bomber's notebook. We, we, have to, we can't do that yet. But we're just gonna deposit these uh, 99 rupees. If we get 200 rupees in the bank, we get a prize, which I would suggest getting this prize very early on. I would also recommend that when a three-day cycle ends, like I would suggest depositing your remaining rupees, and I'll get to, I'll get into that later. But anyway, we fought, we caught the final bomber kid. They're actually going to give us a code. Now, let me state clearly as a warning. If you... You better read their code and you better remember it for when you have to enter it because you're not going to be told again unless you, um... Catch these kids again. So, yeah. The code is 24135 for this playthrough. It might be different for your run, but it, you better remember the code you're giving because you're not going to be told again unless you, unless you catch the kids again. That's the only way 
like when you get the bomber's notebook you'll be able to learn the code or, or in my case if i'm looking at recording if i'm looking at rec the recording the footage but like um yeah we're gonna go to this kid and enter the code but um the code might be different for your file so uh, just remember the code they give you yeah so two one four three five that's m my code i got in this run which changes which could be different for your run Yeah, this is how we're going to find out the whereabouts of a uh, skull kid. Is uh, we're gonna go into this cave right here. And there's a uh, balloon, which uh, we need to uh, we need the our snot bubble to do it. We, there's other ways to do it later, but uh, the snot bubble is the only way we can do it for now. Anyway, so there's a there's a couple of blue rupees, but um, that scarecrow um will skip time. We can't really necessarily do that yet because there are a couple things I want to do on the night of the first day. I will use the skull later, but um, we'll gaze into the telescope. Yeah, we basically uh, yeah, if you're 100 percent in this, get used to doing this telescope side quest. But uh, that's basically where we find out uh. Uh, the whereabouts of Skull Kid. He's on top of that tower, which is strange because it only opens on the eve of the carnival, which is the night of the final day. It's the only way we can get up there. So yeah, you, you kind of have to wait out these three days, but there are ways to, for you to skip time. There's a, uh, there's the, uh, there's the scarecrow that's to skip entire days, and uh, there's the old lady in the hotel that to skip a, a couple hours, but um. I would suggest using the Scarecrow if you- You can just go straight from this to the dawn on the final day, but there are a couple of side quests what I want to do, because we're doing 100%. One thing I- one thing I would suggest is, uh, talking to the Scarecrow so you can learn the, uh... So you can learn the, uh, song that will, um... We'll do- we're not gonna dance, but we are gonna learn, uh, a song. It's very simple to tell us how to play the, uh... Inverted song of time in the in the double song of time, which we cannot get access to yet. But like once um once um we we encounter Skell Kid, we will get access to this. But yeah, I don't know why I said this twice in this uh <laughs> in this run. It's just, I think I hit it by accident. I just wanted to like double make sure I read the tutorial. I do read tutorials even in games like for I've done hundred nine games. I'm doing for like videos purposes like here. Yeah, we want to go back to uh, Clock Town. There's actually one side quest I want to do, and uh, I got hit by that uh, Skeletal. Yeah, it's one of the enemies that returns from Ocarina of Time, the big Skeletal. There actually is one thing I want to do in uh, Clock Town. There's a couple of things I want to do in Clock Town. I want to, we want to hand that Moon's Tear to that uh, business scrub from earlier, because that's going to allow us to get on that platform to uh, be able to uh, see Skull Kid on the uh, night of the final day. All right, so yeah, we're gonna give him that uh, Moon's Tear and we're gonna speak to him, not attack him, but sometimes like, you know, sometimes you can just mix, get the action icon mixed up. You can play 3D all the time, time, but like, uh, yeah, Deku title lead is very short yet. You have to get the Deku title lead, I think a total of like, Maybe four times if you're 100 percenting this. Yeah, you have to do this a lot if you're doing 100. percent We'll get to this later. I'm not. I don't want to sound like a broken record. But yeah, this these yellow uh, Deku flowers they let you go higher, and we actually get our first piece of heart. The interesting thing is the reason I wanted to um the reason I want to do a couple more things in Clock Town is because uh, it's just so we can uh I'll tell you the other way to get in the hotel you can go into this flower Deku flower and then go up in the roof there's you go up through the back doors they don't lock it when they close it for whatever reason so we can just break into this hotel why the hell not but yeah you want to wait till it gets to 12 p.m. on the uh, night of the first day. 
You don't have to do the side quest, but if you're doing completionist, you have to do this. We're gonna. It's gonna be twelve o'clock in a in a moment. So like, you want to give them the Deku title lead. I would I would suggest if you want to hundred percent this as quick as possible, do this right after you get the uh, Deku title lead. But that is if you get it in time. Yeah, we got our second piece of heart. There, are, there are definitely more pieces of heart in this game than there are in uh, a 3D zones. The Breath of the Wild is a completely different ways to gain your health, but like, um, it's, it's sad to say this. I actually kind of suck at Breath of the Wild, but uh, yeah, we're actually um, I think um, my rupee farm right here. No, I don't. I love how I just wander around not knowing what to do, but like, um, I think I do show like a few other things. Like, these th these two girls will be important for a later side quest. And, uh, these guys right here. One thing I do show off is, um, the curiosity stuff. We don't have to do anything here, but it's like, on the night, on nights, you can basically sell things here. I'll get into various things you can do it here later on. But yeah, I am gonna deposit 20 more rupees, so uh so we can get over the 100 barrier. We only need like another 99 rupees in order to uh, deposit this and get the reward. Don't bother us, yeah. So yeah, these girls are gonna be important for a later side quest. I'm only gonna show off, um, I think I rupee farm in this part. I'm only gonna show off rupee farming once because like uh, I do it at a later point in this recording, but like I do speed up the foot. I did speed up the footage in the ending because like, um, Cause like uh, I, I reason I was playing later, but like um yeah, this is basically I'm bas this is basically rupee farming uh right here. We're going to um you basically want to I'm I think we farm it up until it gets the uh, dawn of the second day, but it's a really good way to farm rupees. Just leave the area, come back, the bushes respawn, and you basically you basically just get an easy eight rupees, and you just keep coming back here over and over again, pretty much until you get the prize. It's one of the easiest ways to get the prize. Like, this is the easiest way to get farmers now. There are other ways we can do later, which uh, are better ways to farm rupees, but uh, we don't have access to that yet. We actually cannot leave Clock Town because we don't have a weapon. So, yeah, we're going to have to do this a little bit later. So yeah, we're going to uh, we're gonna farm a little bit of rupees, and uh, what I do um, one thing I don't really like about doing hundred percent runs is that uh, there's a lot of waiting involved. Is that um, this game generally revolves around time management. You kind of have to plan out each three day cycle. Like, and if one thing doesn't work, you have to kind of move on to the next thing. Like, um. This game involves a lot of planning out. Like, yeah, I'm farming rupees just so I can like have easier access to the because we do need to get back to that Deku scrub on the dawn of the second day and that's gonna be the case in like an hour like um three day cycles are basically an hour and a half in game time and like um it's based it's we there are ways we can expend it to three hours like that uh, is what that uh scarecrow said but uh we don't have access to that yet But yeah, one interesting thing right here is, uh, it's gonna play that bell sound, but like, uh, look, take a look at this. And not changing the aspect ratio right here, the game is. The interesting thing is that, uh, there are several ways the game, this game can change your aspect ratio. Luckily, this doesn't fuck up my current setup, because, like, I use an XRG Mini Frame Meister to record game footage, which is, uh, Notoriously awful for games that change aspect re resolution. So like, yeah, I will, I will go over ways this game does change aspect ratio. Yeah, we are gonna see that uh, Deku scrub on the uh, dawn of the second day. 
think I, uh, I don't remember if I did this in one try or two tries, but I think, like, uh, two tries enough to keep it in the video. But, like, um... Because this, this is gonna be slightly harder than it was on day one. There are platforms that move left and right, aside from, uh, up and down. That's why I kept the, that in the video. That didn't last long at all. The thing that sucks about failing is that you have to leave the area and then come back. Like, um, so yeah. And you can't do this at night, keep in mind. You have to do this during the day. You have to do this like once on each of the three days. I recommend getting the side quest done right off the bat, if you can. But yeah, we're going to um, do the second attempt at this uh, side quest, but like, um, you at least want to break even with rupees when you fail. Like, you, you, lose, you don't get the blue, the blue rupee, and you can still, like, afford, like, um, that's what, another reason I recommend rupee farming. That was actually a close one. I I almost fell right there. I do like the music here. You're going to hear this music a lot in various mini games and all that. Do I get that blue would be no I doubt. I think that would have been too far for me to get. I'm trying to remember my own gameplays, but I've actually played this game many times. I have a very consistent way of 100%ing this game. Cause like, I do generally play this game on average, maybe once a year. There's several games that are like that. It's like, uh, Super Mario World's another one of them. Super Mario RPG's another one of them. Earthbound is another one of them. I'll definitely make videos on those as much as Earthbound might be a might be a big one. Because Earthbound's a long game, but we're we're getting out sidetracked. But uh yeah, we're at, we are gonna deposit these 94 rupees in the bank so we can get the prize. And I will say clock town themes, I think I do like the theme on the second day the most. But yeah, we have the max 99 rupees. So yeah, we're gonna deposit these 99 rupees in the bank and we are gonna get a prize. Because like, thing is, we got most of the things we needed to do on the first day. So there's not really much left we can do except wait the clock out. But yeah, we're gonna go to the bank. Yeah, if you deposit uh, 200 rupees in the bank, uh, you get a prize. You get the adult's wallet, which is, uh, lets you carry 200 rupees. And the thing is, you get a blue rupee for every time you put 200 rupees in the bank. Yeah. The adult's wallet. I recommend getting the adult wallet right off the bat. Especially if you do it 100%. But yeah, we are gonna go to that scarecrow. We're gonna maybe skip to the dawn of the first. We're gonna we're gonna go to the dawn of the final day, and then we are going to what am I trying? To, and then we're gonna go to that. Uh, we're gonna go to that Deku scrub, and then we're gonna uh, encounter uh, Skull Kid. Luckily, the second time we're around here, we don't have to uh, see that uh, we don't have to pop that balloon again. But I forgot if we're here on a three day cycle, we have to pop that balloon every time because everything resets. Yeah, we are going to talk to uh, he'll basically skip until night or till dawn, except on the night of the final day. So we're going to. At first, we're going to have to talk to him twice. First, we'll skip him to the night of the second day, and then the dawn of the final day. But yeah, night of the second day, 36 hours of rain. We're going to do this one more time so we can go to the uh, dawn of the final day. I love how it plays the, uh, forest, the, uh, 
Lost Woods theme from Ocarina of Time. They use a lot of things from Ocarina of Time in this game, but yeah, um, B13 is the one here, and he uses a lot of things from Breath of the Wild, but uh, yeah, we're not going to dance right now because we have to do one thing in the front on the final day. I think you should do a bit of rupee farming here and there, or I still want to learn it. Well, I just say yes anyway. You, you don't really have to read the tutorial, but like, you want to read the tutorial as a good luck charm is what basically what I'm trying to say. Yo, I've actually been uh, I've actually been playing this for uh, 40 minutes. Uh. I might just, uh, actually, I might just make the intro the first three to second. I think, my, I think I might make each part of this uh, series a, uh, th a three-day cycle. Because I thought this, uh, I thought, because, like, I recorded it after the first temple, but, like, um, one thing about the, um, one thing about the, uh, this attempt about the, uh, side quest is that, uh, the third day I had a little bit of trouble with the Daku Scrub side quest, but like, uh, the successful attempt is the one you are going to see in the video because I don't like making videos of me raging for like an hour, but like, um, yeah, I definitely did have a hard time and you're going to see that little cut right there. This is the last possible attempt I could have done because if it had been the night of the final day, I just couldn't do the side quest. I would have had to do it the next set of three days. This, uh, there's a combination of uh, this one. There's a combination of uh, left and right and up and down platforms. I would say the second day is probably the hardest one of the three, in my opinion, because it only has um, left and right ones. But I, just, I think I kept failing in this attempt trying to get that blue rupee. But yeah, we are gonna. You're gonna hear that bell right there. And this is another close one. It was the night of the final day. See, I, even though it was the night of the final day, it was during an attempt, so we still get the prize. I actually did get a little worried while recording this footage that I wasn't going to get the prize. And if I had failed, I wouldn't have gotten the prize. And it does kind of suck, because this is, this, this is the last time we actually have to do this. We actually, uh, we almost ran out of time, but we got it anyway. And we got the third piece of heart, which one more we have, uh, four hearts. And, uh, yes, yeah, the last thing we can do. And, um, one thing I will do is, um, I'm going to deposit the remaining rupees. One thing I recommend doing on each set of three days is, uh, in each of three days, this is the night of the final day, so like at midnight we will be able to uh, see the Skull Kid, but like, um, before you end a three-day cycle, I would personally recommend, like, basically depositing all your remaining rupees, because if you reset time, which we're about to do, you lose all your items. That means, like, rupees, everything, like, um, you don't lose any of the ones you keep in the bank, you just lose your rupees you're carrying so that's why i recommend depositing all the rupees you can before uh a three-day cycle ends but now now we're gonna go to that uh we're gonna go to that area and we're gonna wait until the uh three-day cycle ends i'm actually gonna uh i'm actually gonna cut the footage so uh, i'll see you guys in a second Alrighty, so now we are uh, approaching the, uh, we're approaching the, uh, even the carnival. I decided to cut the footage because I didn't want to see you guys wait. I didn't want you guys to wait for all that time. Plus, I lose audience retention this way. This already is going to be an hour, like a 50 minute video, I think. Because, like, the night of, the last six hours is basically the countdown. This is basically, there'll be an in-game count and it tells you how much time there is before the moon crashes. I was basically going to tell us to uh, go up that uh, 
scares, but uh, this is our encounter with Skull Kid that we've been waiting for for like the past three in game days. Skull Kid is basically uh, going to use his magic, Majora's, the magic of Majora's Mask, basically get that moon to fall down. Well, we have to shoot a bubble at it, and he'll drop the ocarina. He'll never pick it back up. We just have to reclaim the ocarina. And get ready for a cutscene once we uh, reclaim the ocarina. It says Princess Zelda gave us this, and memories of her are going to come back. This is the only time Zelda appears in the whole game. We've now learned the Song of Time. So all we have to do is play this, and we'll be able to reset from the to the first day. The Goddess of Time is basically protecting us, so we're basically in a Bill Murray Groundhog Day type loop. So yeah, we just have to uh, select the ocarina, and uh, I'm going to sign off of this commentary, and I'm going to let the cutscene play out. So uh, thank you guys for watching this all the way through. I'll see you later.